Hello, this is Dr. Calvin of I Associates of South Texas. I'm going to show you a case we did last week of an intraocular lens exchange. This is a patient who had a refractive surprise where the refractive result did not equal the patient's expectations, and we discussed the risk benefits alternatives of exchanging the intraocular lens, and the patient agreed to this. You can see we made a side port incision at the superior cornea using a 15 degree super sharp blade. We're going to make one on the inferior cornea to give access to the eye via these two ports if necessary. The main incision usually is able to be opened with a blunt spatula uh, after we inject viscoelastic into the anterior chamber. This creates space and firms up the eye and gives some resistance when we're opening a previously made corneal incision with a blunt spatula. I found that up to six months after surgery these can be opened uh, with a cyclodialysis uh, spatula which is a blunt instrument. We hold the superior paracentesis with 0.12 forceps. It's a very fine forcep and then we open the clear corneal incision with a blunt spatula. As you can see there we do not need to uh, cut this again. We're going to fill the anterior chamber with a dispersive viscoelastic and we try to get under the intraocular lens with the cannula. You can see an air bubble and viscoelastic one underneath the intraocular lens and this will free some of the adhesions of the lens to the capsular bag. This is a silicone lens, a Bausch & Lomb LI61AO that is not as sticky as some of the acrylic lenses so it's easier to free from the capsular bag. The haptics are very thin and uh, do not cause much scar tissue. We're going to use a Sinsky hook. It's a little instrument that has a uh, small uh, right angle at the end of the instrument with a part of the instrument that is made to hook around intraocular lenses and haptics just to lift it out of the anterior chamber. You can see we've already lifted the superior haptic out of the capsular bag and placed it in the um, iris corneal angle and we're going to now remove the inferior haptic and using the Sinsky hook bring it into the anterior chamber and rest it on top of the iris. This maneuver can be done without rotating the lens which does not bring the haptics through the previously made scar tissue. You can rotate the lens as well and then dial it up into the anterior chamber if necessary. We put viscoelastic underneath the intraocular lens implant and above the intraocular lens implant to give protection to the corneal endothelium. That's the very delicate uh, cells on the inside of the cornea and also stop the posterior capsule from being violated with the intraocular lens scissors that we're going to introduce in a second to bisect the lens. We use a two instrument technique to bisect the lens. We use a Sinsky hook again in our left hand, go through the superior paracentesis and stabilize the lens. These silicone lenses are very slippery and they will move if not held with a second instrument. We bisect the lens with the lens scissors that have teeth on them and hold the lens in place and we will completely transect the lens with the lens scissors holding the lens with the Sinsky hook. Uh, this leaves us with two bisected parts of the intraocular lens that we will now be able to remove through the 2.8 millimeter incision that had been made previously. We inject a viscoelastic again underneath the intraocular lens to protect the capsular bag and corneal endothelium and position the lens halves in a way where they will be easily maneuvered out of the eye. You always want the haptic uh, so that it will fold in when you pull the lens half out of the eye. You don't want it to act like a barb or a fish hook and get uh, stuck in the eye when removing the lens half. We are going to position this lens half so that it is easily accessible with the intraocular forcep. We use a uh, micro forcep here to remove the lens piece. You can see we hook it around the optic of the lens and then just draw the lens half through the clear cornea incision very smoothly without any difficulty. We now use the Sinsky hook to the last half 
so that the haptic optic junction is facing in the correct position to be easily removed from the eye. Again, we use the micro forcep to grab part of the cut optic and then bring it through the clear cornea incision after we instill viscoelastic both above and below the lens fragment. You can see we remove it here with the uh, intraocular forcep by grabbing that uh, optic. The lens has now been completely removed through a 2.8 millimeter incision fairly atraumatically and we're going to refill the posterior chamber and capsular bag with viscoelastic and we will inject a LI61AO of a slightly less powerful diopteric value to give the patient better uncorrected visual acuity and once the lens sits in the capsular bag we will make sure we can rotate that lens freely inside the capsular bag breaking any further adhesions and letting the lens sit in its uh, proper orientation. The LI61AO lens is angulated 10 degrees backwards and it should sit firmly against the posterior capsule. We then remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber using automated irrigation aspiration. That's the automated irrigation aspiration handpiece. We can go underneath the lens to remove any cortical remnants that have found their way into the capsular bag from the capsular fornices and then remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. We then seal the wound with BSS, which is balanced salt solution, uh, using hydrodissection that will ensure the wounds uh, remain leak free. And you can see we have stromal hydration where the cornea thickens as uh, BSS is injected into it and gives a good seal of the wound. We do not need to seal the inferior wound as we did not need to use this for lens explantation or repositioning. Thank you for your attention. This is Dr. Kavanaugh of I Associates of South Texas.